Hey, what's going on guys? Kai here, and welcome back to Let's Play Valkyrie Profile 2, Silmarium. Where we left off last time, it was boss time! Oh, don't be surprised, of course there's a boss waiting for us at the summit of this mountain. We're playing a JRPG after all. And as such, I want to make a few changes to my party, because my strategy requires a very specific setup and a little bit of precision. But if I can pull it off, it'll be pretty stylish. You guys like flashy combos, right? Alright, first things first, I want to give Alicia the Crest S-Talk. And I'm going to get rid of the Blue Soul Flame to give her... The Great Eagle Heart to boost her attack by 15%. I'm not even worried about Beast Bludgeon because in the next town that skill is going to be irrelevant for her. Some of you may know why. Same thing with Rufus, I want to give him one of those. Hmm... Yeah, we're going to have to sacrifice Descaling Might, but that's okay. And yes, I know I have a Might Potion in my inventory, but I still I want to save that for another boss. Okay, now I need to rearrange Rufus's attacks. Yep, that looks good. Going to bring Celeste in for this one. So, oops. Sorry, Dylan. And Lazard. Lazard is crucial to this strategy because Rufus's freezing arrow will only hit the boss about three times. However, if I use Firestorm to knock him down, the boss that is, its body will be spread out and I can get up to five hits with Freezing Lance, which is going to be crucial. And I brought Celeste because, well, you'll see. I want to boost her attack as well, so she gets the Ram's Horn and a Great Eagle Heart. Unfortunately, these don't stack, so you can't equip four of them and boost your attack by like 60%. <laughs> but we can give her some more blue runes to uh, boost her attack a little bit. There we go. Okay, I think we're all set and ready to go. Let's go check out this altar. Whoa! Wait a minute, that's not very scary. I've seen Pokemon more threatening than that. It's boss time! Be careful that we do not fall. Against the Wyvern, okay. So notice how he starts the battle off with a really big Conal attack. We don't like that. So what I want to do is first of all lure him off to the right a little bit. just outside of his range and use sap power. What this does is it forces the AI to sometimes rethink what it's going to do and he might try to use another attack. Gotta be very careful here. Damn it. Okay, that didn't work out too well. I could have just used heal with Alicia, I suppose. But anyways, we, we got this to work. And the reason I want to lure him off to the right is so I have room to dash to his flank. Alright, watch this, guys. Sorry if I go through these soul crushes a little quickly, but if you don't execute them fast enough, you can drop your combo. And I don't want to do that. I'll explain Soul Crushes more in just a few minutes, don't worry guys. Yeah, look at that damage. Ooh, it's going to be close. Come on Alicia, now is the time. Oh man, yeah, that's how you do it. What do you mean that was cheap and overpowered? I 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of Soul Crushes. Hey, hey, we learned Fist of Iron after the boss battle. Absolutely. Thank you, game. Really appreciate that. What's wrong? Uh, nothing. There's nothing on the dais. I guess this is where we call in Sumeria. You see, there is another ally in our ranks. Hmm? What's going on? Have you been hiding something from us? You will be quiet! <laughs> what a dick. Silmaria? We need you for object reading. Her spiritual concentration appears to be blocked. Give her space. It's called object reading. She is deciphering psychic energy in the dais. The orb has been taken to Vilnor. That's a long way from here. My name is Leona. We've been tagging along for a while. I'm Samaria. So, she's not the same girl as before. It's like multiple personalities, right? Souls sharing a single body. I've heard about it, but never actually seen it until now. It's something like that. Well, what do you know? You're probably wasting your time looking for treasure around here. Well, good luck. Oh, just one thing. By orb, you mean the dragon orb? And if I do? Well, we don't need anything that lofty. But could we come along? I've heard the lavish treasures around the orb make plunderers forget what they came for. I don't see a problem. Watch, Watch your back. back. Huh?
Alright, looks like we are off to Vilnor to search for the orb, but I wonder what's going on with Leone. Hmm. What do you guys think? Is she genuine? Or is there some shadow play in the works? Okay. So if you thought the Soul Crush abuse was a little too overpowered, I'll humor you guys. There's another way you can defeat that boss. And this one's for you, Rabbit. I call it Operation Kappa. So we need Dylan, Arngrim, and good old Crad. There we go. We're gonna try this one again. We need to make... Yeah, we're gonna make Rufus his own party. Not that it really matters. There we go. And hopefully that'll change his attack. Yes, perfect. Oh, so close. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can see what I'm trying to do here already. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, you can just knock him off the edge and kill him instantly. However, I don't rec recommend this because you don't get any experience and you also don't earn any progress towards skills. Yeah, I guess if you troll the game, the game trolls you right back. Alright, for the sake of this LP though, I will show you how that fight is supposed to go. That way the boss actually has a chance, and I can show you the mechanics. So let's get our party back to the way it was. Yeah, that looks good. Now that I don't care about killing him in one round, I may as well get my skills back to the way they were. We are going to give you Fists of Iron this time. Okay, we're good. By the way, this boss doesn't have any items worth farming, so I wouldn't worry about that. I do not think I can do this. Sure you can. So the way Soul Crushes work when you're executing combos like that, well, the only requirements are that your character has a weapon that can enable special attacks, obviously, and that that character has dealt damage to the enemy in that round. And once you do that, you can link them together. After the first Soul Crush, your heat gauge will go down by 24, I believe. It's a fixed amount. And if you can get it back up to 100 during the attack, you can then use another character. Only this time, you lose even more heat than you did before. So on and so forth. And the more people you use in a combo, obviously, the harder it is to get back to 100 because you start off a lot lower. So it's really important to have your party set up with characters that have good synergy with one another to really maximize your damage from soul crushes. Now when this boss gets to 50%, the next physical attack will deal zero damage and he splits in half like this. So now you have two targets. That's gonna hurt. But you only have to kill the upper lizard to win the battle. But you know what? Yeah, we'll bring her back. But another thing, another thing you have to keep in mind when you're doing soul crushes is the longer you take to actually choose a character to use a soul crush, the less heat you're going to start out with because when that timer runs out or as it's getting lower, you're also losing heat. And there's only a few characters who are capable of being third in line and generating enough heat 
to fill the gauge back up to 100. I'm trying to think here. Uh, this is going to be very painful. Yeah, as you can see, doing this battle the hard way is a little rough. Now I'm just going to go for the kill. See that time limit? And now my heat gauge is only 22. Normally it would be in the upper 70s. And I'm not going to have enough to get back to 100, but he's going to die anyways. But that's how that fight is supposed to go. It's a lot more dangerous. And you gotta watch out for Wing Flap, because if your party members get knocked off, they get removed from battle. Okay, now let's get the hell out of here. Unfortunately, we have to walk all the way back out here. But before we leave, definitely restore the Sword Blessing to the Spring. It's very cheap, very good. Totally worth it. and we're still gonna hang on to it. Now before we leave here, there's a little bit of item collecting I wanna do. Not much. In fact, I already have one of the items. Here it is, a feather. I wanna get four of those in total, and you get those by fighting owl bears. Just get behind them, break their legs or their lower body, and you can get feathers. You can also get them from the giant hawks if you break their wings, but it's a lot easier to go after the owl bears. So I'm going to get three more of those and meet you back here once I've completed that. Alright guys, we're back and I have a surprise for you. Remember that rare enemy I told you about? The Sack Mimic? Well there he is, behind the wall over there. Ran into him while I was farming feathers. There's the owlbear off to the side there. And yeah, these guys can just randomly show up as reinforcements during a battle. And if you're lucky enough, you can get their body to drop an item called the... I think it's the Pacemaker, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's a really good accessory, but again, I wouldn't take the time to farm one, because we'll have another item with the same effect soon enough. But if you do happen to get one, hang on to it. It's really good. It increases all of your stats as your HP drops. Combine that with survival and some other things, and your powers can get really or your characters can get ridiculously powerful. You know, this enemy kind of reminds me of an enemy from the old Dragon Quest games. Wasn't there an enemy that was like a bag of jewels in Dragon Quest 4? Maybe it was 5. Well, anyways, we're going to take this guy head on. Aww. Well, we got a Thunder Gem. Those are always nice. See if we can get some more feathers. Aim for the head to finish it quicker. Hey, hey, level up for Alicia. All right. I think I do have all of the feathers that I was looking for, though. Uh, yeah, have five, actually, so we're good. And you know what? We're almost out of this place, or I am. Oh, for uh, references' sake, this screen here has a beetle that always contains an owl bear, so that's a good place to farm feathers. It's too bad we didn't get that pacemaker. Oh well.
Stop loafing. We have to set out for Vilnor while it's still light. No fun taking orders from a grave robber like that, is it? What did you call me? Stand down, Arngrim. We're not here to give orders. And I'm sorry if we offended you. Arngrim was merely pointing out that the roads can be dangerous at night. Weren't you? <clears throat> I've been a bandit and a pirate, but nobody calls me a grave robber. To them, it's all the same. Besides, it's not like you to get upset so easily. Not like me, huh? Do I sense mistrust towards us? Perish the thought, nothing of the sort. And you? No, of course not, not at all. What about your friend? Can you use this object reading to read people's minds? Lady Silmaria Valkyrie. Would you like yours read? If it would alleviate suspicion, we would gladly oblige, right, Arngrim? Sure, why not? It's no use. There's nothing for me to read. What? Nothing at all? Oh, I see. So you were suspicious of us. No, uh, that's not what I meant. All right. You're not a grave robber. I'm impressed, though. I never knew that Valkyries could read thoughts and objects. It is not a Valkyrie's power. It is mine alone. Jeez, you call a guy a thief and he wants to rip your lungs out. Locke would be proud. Uh, I'm sorry, grave robber. Treasure hunter, for that matter. Ah, uh, it's good to see Dylan and uh, Arngrim formed a bromance. Let's go back to Coriander. You know one thing I love about doing LPs is not sharing games and interacting with you guys. It's noticing all of the small, seemingly meaningless details in these cutscenes that are just huge, huge foreshadowing like neon signs for events later in the game that I just never knew about or I never paid attention to. But now that I'm doing an LP of it, you know, you notice these things. It's like, man, you know, sneaky little programmers. Like that scene right there, you guys, revealed so much. <laughs> huh, a giant bird. Well, I'm sure no one around here is capable of doing that. Okay, so if you come back to Coriander, after the r mountain ruins there, talk to the girl, and tell her no. Yeah, that is true. No dragon orb, nothing. 
Hey, hey, we get the royal jelly. It's a crafting material needed for some pretty good stuff later on. Wait a second. You're supposed to be able to talk to a chicken to get another reward. Maybe it's that one in the background. Or maybe it's on the first screen. I always forget. There we go. We get the golden egg, and what this does is it increases all of your stats randomly between 1 and 10 points. So I would recommend saving before doing that to make sure you get a good number. And again, don't use that on Lazard, Dylan, Leone, or Arngrim. But now that we're back here, the merchant has a new item, the barrel bracelet. It's a green strengthening rune that increases your attack by 3% can't do anything with it now, but it's an easy way to get a green rune, and attack plus three is always nice. By the way, my general rule when it comes to accessories is just hang on to them. <laughs> Don't sell them, unless you have like 30 of them or something. And even then, I like to hang on to about four or five of every accessory. Anyways, talking to that couple gives us our first optional dungeon, the Ancient Forest. We'll go there later. Let's check out Vilnor. Another town from the first Valkyrie Profile game. Well, everybody looks happy. And I'm going to save the town exploration for the next video. There's one thing I want to do here before we call it quits. Flower girl, huh? Ten off. Huh. Reminds me of another game. Wait, no, that was one gill. Never mind. But yeah, you can buy one of these to get a tiny flower. It increases your max HP by 10%. And for that price, it's a steal. I want to get four of those, just in case. Probably won't use them, but you never know. It's not like 40 auth is going to break the bank, either. Alright, Eris, see you next time. Here we go, the armory. Off to the left here is another list of materials. Um, so you can read these if you want to, but you really only have access to, like, these two. I wouldn't worry about that. Alright, so what I want to buy for Crad is an iron helmet, crystal chainmail, some work boots, and a scrap. We're going to find one of these very soon, but that's okay. I want to buy this one anyways. Sure, sounds good. Well, he does have some really good stuff to craft, but we'll worry about that next time. As you guys can probably guess, I am going to be releasing Crab. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why did you spend all this money on him? Well, you'll see. Yes, you really have become that strong, Crad. Goodbye. And for doing that now, with that equipment, you get a lot of good stat boosting items. That is the best equipment set up for heavy warriors right now. So let's put some of these to use. 20 more attack and accuracy for Alicia. 100 more HP. 5 more strength. 10 more agility and avoidance. And 5 more defense and magic defense. Not bad, not bad. Oh, another thing here, since I have Soul Crushes and Heavy Warriors on the mind, is that you can make an Elemental Edge, which, well, you can't see here, but it allows Heavy Warriors to use Soul Crushes, and it boosts the damage of your Soul Crush by 30%. It is a very good weapon. 
What? I don't want to make that. <laughs> now, I know what you guys are thinking. Kai, if it's so good, why don't you want to get that? That would be amazing, right? Well, the reason is because my heavy warrior is about to get another weapon that will allow him to eradicate his enemies, if you know what I mean. But you can go for the ele ele elemental edge if you want to. In fact, I might get one just for bosses. And just so I can show you a soul crush combo using your whole party. Oh, obviously. Here we get the Karatikator. Yeah, that's a very clever game. But just how overpowered is this item? Is it more powerful than the expert's experience? Well, you guys will just have to wait until next time to find out. But until then, as always, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day. Stick around if you would like to read about our newest Einherjar, Voltar. Bastard.